Uh, this presentation, I have an acknowledgement uh, uh, from my last uh, uh, fellowship in India. It's on the host that we create. And uh, as we all know that pulmonary arterial hypertension is an irreversible disease with fatal outcomes characterized by progressive obliteration of the pulmonary vasculature causing right ventricular failure. PH, as we all know, is an orphan disease, has no definitive treatment that can reverse the condition. The ultimate treatment is lung transplant, but which is not offered in all countries and has a high mortality associated with PAH. Atrial septostomy can relieve the symptom in patients with syncope and heart failure and serve as a bridge to transplant. It improves the cardiac index and tissue oxygen delivery. Surgical or interventional port shunt in case of supersystemic peer pressures is another option, but has a higher mortality. So let me walk you down with a story of a man with PAH. This man was a 53 years old gentleman and was diagnosed to have a large second arm ASD in 1997 in India. His pre-surgical cardiac catheterization revealed moderate PAH. He underwent a surgical patch closer at that time and had a prolonged ICU stay in the post-operative period. He was followed up with a periodic cardiologist in Chennai for the last 25 years, was included into the Griffon trial, that is uh, one of the very large trials of, of uh, PAH, and was treated with Celixipac with a prosacycline receptor analog, along with other pulmonary vasodilators for the last 25 years. But he continued to have class 2 NYT symptoms. And for the last couple of months, he's having class 3 symptoms, pedal edema requiring diuretic therapy, and recurrent presyncopal episodes on exertion. So what to do in this sort of cases? Yesterday we were discussing uh, as such cases in the morning that with ASD, with hypertension, even post-operative periods having hypertension. So what can we do to this type of patients? So on clinical examination, we found this, the patient was saturating at room air of 98%. He could walk 374 meters after, uh, on six minutes and his saturations remained kind of around 95%. He had all the features of right ventricular failure. JV, JVP was elevated, pedal edema was present, there was cardiomegaly, P2 was loud, a very long early diastolic murmur was present, along with pulmonary vascular ejection click. His ECG shows sinus rhythm with right axis deviation, first degree heart block, and RVH and right ventricular strain pattern. On the right hand side, you can appreciate his chest X ray showed that this cardiomegaly and this a bulging pulmonary trunk with peripheral pruning. Uh, RA was dilated and other uh, like external wires could be seen. His echo showed the IVC. On the left hand side you can see IVC is dilated, it's not collapsing and on the middle of the apical four chamber view you can see that RARV is dilated having RV dysfunction and moderate TR. And RV systolic pressure here was calculated to 67, at least plus 15 due to the uh, dilated IVC. And on short axis views, you can see how the pulmonary artery is dilated with PR and the um, uh, parasol long axis and the short axis views shows how the interventricular septum is bulging towards the LV, which can explain why he was facing presyncopal at episodes on exertion. So we took the patient up for the cath and on the left hand side you can see the basal pressures on the right hand side you can see with the nitric oxide. Basal RA pressure was elevated 12 and the PA pressure was very high 110 over 40 over 70 against an aortic pressure of 120, 70 and 85. And after giving oxygen RA pressure reduced to 6 but the PA pressure continued to be high. It's 95-40 against a 95-40 with a mean of 60 against a, 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 a normal aortic pressure. His cardiac uh, index at the basal level was low, that is 2.6. PVR was 23, very, very high with a high PVR and SVR ratios. And on nitric oxide, there was not much change in cardiac index and very minimal decrease in the PVR. So as we all know that the critic area for nitric oxide response it's taken to be reduction of 10 millimeter mercury decrease in the mean PA pressure, which was only present in our case, but absolute reduction of the mean PA pressure to 40 millimeter mercury, 20% reduction in the mean PA pressure, 20% reduction in the PVRI, or dropping of the PVR SVR ratio less than 0.3 was not present. So this patient was not a nitric oxide responder. So this is a paper uh, uh, and, and published in 2021 by Dr. Shiva Kumar. 
study of the effect of the ocleitic atrial flow regulator on symptom hemodynamics in echocardiac parameters with advanced pulmonary hypertension and the indications for taking of for this patients were presyncope or syncope rv failure or failure of medical management as this was present in our case and the criteria for the afr implantation are were taken to be right atrial pressure less than 20 lvdp less than 18 pvri less than 55 and saturation more than 90% all these four was present in our basal level so what does an afr do we want to provide an optimal shunt for a better oxygen transport but as you can see from the on the left hand side on the pink bar if the septostomy is small then you can close prematurely but if the septostomy is large it can cause life threatening hypoxia so the ideal fr should be having to able to cause right atrial decompression relief of the venous congestion and offloading the right ventricle in the cost of some hypoxemia so we have to give controlled right to left shunt so that it can improve the left heart feeling and increase the cardiac output so in the view of progressive right heart failure in the setting of progressive pulmonary hypertension refractory to pulmonary vasodilator with recurrent presyncopal attack attacks the usual choice is brilliant atrial septostomy with static balloon dilation but given the thick pericardium of the surgical asd patch we planned for atrial septal puncture and implantation of the flow regulator device across the septum so this is the cath view showing how the broken bone needle is being taken and one uh, and taken and uh, is uh, and is positioned across the septum one of the pictorial catheters is in the aortic root and we are making sure that the uh, the broken bone needle is away from the coronary arteries and the uh, we puncture a little posteriorly so that it can perforate the septum it was a very very thick pericardium and we had to try three times just to make the puncture and insert a wire so after three attempts only a 014 run through wire could be passed through the intertest septum into the lv and parked into the into the dta followed by which uh, a static dilation and a serial dilation of the intertest septum was done with apollo balloon and mustang balloon serially to dilate so let us come to know a little about the atrial flow regulator device it has a central perforation that provides a predictable intertest communication provides a pop off for the hypertensive pa but it can be all, it is also used in case of lv dysfunction in case of raised lv pressure in heart failure patients patients also it comes in size of 6 8 and 10 mm less than 8 years of age and 20 kg of weight we can use a 6 mm device but here is the interesting part when the right atrial pressure is 12 mm or more we can use a 10 mm 8 mm device but if the right atrial pressure is less than 12 we have to go for a larger uh, device so that it can offload the right atrium so this was a 12 french long afr device the uh, uh, our delivery system and just like an az device we deploying from the la and we've taken 8 uh, 8 mm afr device and is deployed against the internal puncture and um, after deployment we given sheath angiograms you can see the right to left shunt on the angio or on the right hand side you can see after the uh, angiogram is been done with how the bubbles passes from the right to left that is confirming right to left shunt and this is just after the day of the procedure you can see the blue flows from the ra to the uh, la uh the saturation on discharge was 86% in this case the patient felt uh, better already after the day of procedure and on follow up his saturations remained 86% his rv function improves reduction in diuretic use and improvement in well being so, and no further syncope was uh, uh, said by the patient so not only close but also the holes we have to create to prolong the life in this sort of orphan disease My acknowledgement is Dr. Shiva Kumar from uh, Triple M Chennai, and thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Sherin Tabir, for your very vibrant presentation. Now it's question answer session. Uh, I would like to tell Kekesar, you have.